doing with my life? Yeah, well. I feel like I just saw Dan, though. I've not actually seen Dan in person in a while. That's true. We, we did a podcast last night, but that's uh, just remembering I should. Podcasts are not real life. No, you should, really. Well, sometimes they're the closest I have. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, I don't wit- think... witness this. Um, I don't see a lot of people live on the internet, about this. So. Uh, we are on the YouTube, so I see. Okay. I just get the leave meeting. Uh, no, it's okay. I'll stay. Uh, this time. Uh, I like it the way it just gives you a choice. You know, right up front. Do you want to leave? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but um, right, oh, I yes. pasted it into the Discord. It's in the places. Everything's well. Fine. Hello. You're way off mic, Tony. So I can't. Well, I mean, I have to move over here. Where I know you, know, you got I a lot have, of. I, I can either be. This is. I can only. Or at I Legos. Can, I can only sort of see your setup, and it looks insanely complicated. Like. I don't know what is happening with this microphone that you have. I don't it know. seems like there's it's a sort of steady cam mine. thing it's going just, on. It's, or... just, it's just a sure microphone on an arm. It and has the... a shock mount that it doesn't need because I had a shock mount from the previous mic that it screwed into. And then there's what's the cable. The, okay, the blue cable. That? Okay. The blue cable goes to my phone, which is on a uh like clamp, a mount. A mount okay. looking down. Got so, uh, it. And the red yes. cable is your your audio cable. cable. Yes. Okay. So Two cables, the yeah. red cable yeah Audio I just, cable, it, video it's because cable. The, it's because they're colored so well also on my arm i have like the cables threaded in so i don't see the cables well fancy. i just i'm just saying i'm just I don't saying see them, I, don't... I mean the video one is just draped across space yeah no no because, i get you, you know. i get you uh but the audio one is usually not here this is you know because you see me it's when i'm questions. over at my desk yeah exactly. this is at the little and i have my desk is like a tiny little like computer desk it's not like a full desk with drawers or anything like that and then i have next to it a small surface on which i build legos so. is there a weird you know sort of almost time capsule idea of the computer desk like i feel like that was a it, thing in like i will say that this this computer i have removed them it did have a keyboard tray it did have a extra stand for the monitor that had slots oh, yeah, built yeah, yeah, into yeah. it Sure. For CD ROMs. <laughs> so well, this the, the, is this this is like a forty-five dollar desk from Staples purchased twenty years ago. Yeah. So, my my yeah. former desk was a sort of corner desk with a curve mm. bit at the front. And it was meant for CRTs that were like a meter yes. deep. And it was completely useless if your screen was actually, you know, like three centimeters. Yes. Deep. Yeah. I I I added a keyboard tray to my desk. Right, I think during the pandemic, because I was, I was spending more time at this desk, and it's a even it's a standing sit stand desk, but it's just a manual like you have like a clutch that you're like a break break the release and then you can lift it up or down. I remember we moved that, and you were really worried about moving it because it could like unlock uh, unlock and like basically spring loaded like slam your head into a wall or something. Yeah, it was not um, great. Uh, I know I found the thing to lock it, happen. I believe. Yeah. It yeah, did not happen. Didn't I had found yeah. the stuff no to one lock died. it, but I hadn't it moved it. Really before. boring. Oh. But it, it, it is one of those things where like I realize even at the lowest it's like slightly too high for mm-hmm. like where, like my wrists would be like a little bit like this. So I I got the keyboard tray for it, which has been pretty good. But it's a desk I got notably I got for free. <laughs> So it was like, is this, oh. is this a sponsor? Um, no, it wasn't. It was from, honestly, this was the weirdest sort. Like, uh, so back, it was at Macworld Expo. Back when and, they had Macworld Expos. Yeah. Back when they had Macworld Expos. And I was a speaker and they would give you a speaker bag that had lots of little, like, oftentimes, like, here's a software thing or here's this or here's some, like, you know, an iPhone case or, you know, like a handful of things from vendors or whatever. Mm-hmm. And one of them was this thing that was like, just a piece of paper is like, Oh, redeem this for a free desk. And then we shoved <laughs> in with a bunch of other stuff. that were like flyers and advertisements or whatever. And I was like, I was like, there's no way they're going to give you an entire free desk. And so I was like, well, you know, I, I filled it out and like, you know, put in my order is like, ah, I still don't believe this is going to happen. And then I forgot about it. And this Eight was one later. of those weird scenarios where they delivered it but they delivered it to the wrong house, (laughs) delivered it to the next street over at my number. And it was like a hundred (laughs) pounds. So I like drove (laughs) around the corner in my car and like had to get it off somebody. Cause the person like came to my house and was like, Hey, I think we got a thing for you. 
<laughs> and I like drove around and they had to like help me lever it into the back of the car. Uh, yeah. So it's like, well, I'm never giving up this desk now. <laughs> the answer, because why, why would I pay anything? Dan, how heavy was that kitchen island we moved? That was insanely heavy. Okay, uh, you don't remember how we, I, remember, I was like 150 pounds. It was heavy. I thought it was like I thought it was like 300 pounds. <laughs> um, I thought it was 300 pounds. Okay, it was I lot. remember Dan was like, "I need you to come with me to like a place to get like we had to drive. He had a, a rented van, and we drove to the other side of Boston to the suburbs to pick up uh, our a, a giant, uh, not assembled kitchen island. Oh, and I bought it. It I, was from Crate and Barrel. Yes. Yeah. And I think like the Crate and Barrel people loaded it into the van for us, maybe. And then we got to your house and we could like we got it out of the truck. And then there were only like, I don't know, three or four steps up to the oh, porch. Like and we were lighting like, it. And we were set. like, we can't lift it. We would lift <laughs> like a corner of it and angle it and then like another corner. And then I think once I think we somehow got it onto the porch and we had rotated it around and there was a side that said like this thing is 300 pounds. Do not try to lift it. And we're like, Oh, <laughs> it was it, definitely it, one of those moments where like, it did not it, like size wise. The, the reason I think was it was extremely dense. I assume it had, had like, like a butcher block slabs top, of wood, like a slab yeah. of wood, solid yeah. wood. And you know, it, but it does not look that large. Like, you no. know, it's one of those things where like you might see somebody carrying a package like this size from Ikea and be like, yeah, it's a normal size. It was, a, it would, so I watch, don't know. It would have been a very these two hard guys for, being like, yeah. oh, she can't yeah. li literally can't lift this. You might, people must be walking past thinking like these weaklings, like these, what are these? <laughs> these nerds. Yeah. These nerds. But it was all, I assume, heavy lumber, basically. I, anyway. I like the fact that, you know, Tony seems to be your go-to guy for moving a body or whatever it is. I know a lot of that's just based on proximity. It's not like I have a special <laughs> skill set. I'm certainly not strong. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm I, Every time I located. ask you to move a kitchen island, James, you're like, no, I no. took me forever to fly over there. And I, I'm, I'm like, on a different right, island. Well. So Dan, Dan, don't answer this question if it's like, uh, you know, like endangering your... No, well, I was just going to say endangering your information security or anything like that did you move that to the new house the island yeah the island oh i don't it got sold i think oh, we did have okay. it so we you I did think not we bring it did, over well i'm not sure i think we actually had it in the kitchen for a little while before we sold it but i remember trying to get it into somebody's car and being like man i don't know if this is gonna work <laughs> like <laughs> where's like, tony like, Selling I, it on on like Craigslist, I think my wife I put it on had Craigslist. That experience. Uh, and I was like, bring, bring a big car. And it, I will say, it was the, easier to carry once it was assembled because okay, the distribution good. of the weight. Yeah, was like okay. Now it's like moving a heavy table they as didn't opposed to disassemble a heavy it table into compressed parts. into a yeah. very small it's like <laughs> like a, a black hole table. Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, I did. I've had that experience. It's been a while since I've sold stuff on Craigslist and slash. I don't know if I'll do it ever again. <laughs> Uh, about 11 years ago, I was moving uh, and, you know, uh, at the time had a house that was mainly furnished with pieces of furniture I had received for free and did try to sell like the few pieces of furniture that I had purchased. Uh, and I definitely sold a futon to somebody who showed up in like a Toyota Camry. And it was like, what What are you thinking? Um and he was not a pleasant person to deal with. So he was like, OK, well, you have to help me disassemble it. And I was like. Okay, and then I disassembled it with him in my living room, which was not the most fun. He was not the <laughs> uh, most friendly person. Um, and then he filled his Toyota Camry with about 75% of the futon. Um, and then he's like, okay, well, I'll, I'm will i going to, you know, leave now and uh, I'll be back for the other parts of it, you know, soon. And uh, and I was like, okay. And but you need to pay me before you leave. And he was real unhappy about that. But it was like, I'm not going to let you leave with most of a futon with the promise of coming back sometime, stranger. Uh, but yeah, he, that's I will say the heaviest thing I ever moved was I was helping out a family friend. I uh, was redoing um, this is my like my parents friend who's like, you know, he's a he's a uh DIY guy, right? He was like, he was redoing their bathroom. Uh, and he's like, um, this was probably when I was in my 20s. And he's like, I need you, I gotta get this old bathtub out of this third oh, floor God. bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so I went over and it was a claw foot, like ca cast iron, maybe like probably. Dan, and is that is that a is that a, a bathtub or a cauldron? Uh, you know. <laughs> 
six of one half to the other. And when we moved that down three flights of stairs and basically the deal was like, he's like, I get, I found a guy online, you know, who's like, I, I was like, I'll give it to you for free. You just have to come get it and be mm-hmm. aware of what you're getting. And so he and I, just the two of us moved that bathtub down three flights of stairs. Wow. Like we had like a, it was like vertically, we had like a rope tied through the holes where like the faucets would be. And we would move it just basically one step at a time. <laughs> and I I have also moved two pianos in my life, and I don't I think say, I don't recommend any of this. I mean, I was this... gonna say I think there's a whole thing where basically people can't get rid of pianos because what nobody wants is a used piano of questionable functionality, right? Uh, and that it's basically people are giving away pianos left and right uh, because they're you know people don't want pianos. So yeah, I we, I had one in my old apartment for didn't many it years. come with it? Yes. Okay, I was going to say, which is basically, it came with a piano. That is code for, we didn't want to deal with giving away the piano. It's your piano now. Yeah. Um, did you then have to get rid of that piano? No, I actually kept it for many years. Uh, and then I eventually, I think when my wife moved in, we like, we needed a little more space. You so need this, like, you need this it was my space. landlord's. And like, we're just like, because my landlord owned the building and mm-hmm. he lived upstairs. And he was like, oh, I just, you know. I'll, I'll take it. Obviously, it's my piano. I'll just take it. Uh, but like he and I moved it out. It was upright too. Like, but we moved it out in like across. Like, I want to say like we backed up his pickup truck up to our porch and like put down the tailgate and then just like made like a makeshift like you know a couple two by fours or something and like partially rolled it. But also, it's a piano. It's incredibly heavy. Yeah, I was <laughs> impressed. Uh, I live uh, uh, in New England in a tiny. Uh, third floor apartment at the top of you know uh, a house that would not have this would not have been an apartment at some point in the house's history but they've they've wedged an apartment in here and it's all slanty ceilings and whatnot and they do in our kitchen we have a refrigerator we're that fancy um because you need you need one to, to rent an apartment and unfortunately uh a few summers ago the refrigerator died and uh which raised two challenges one they needed to get a new refrigerator up here and two, they needed to get rid of the old refrigerator. And I was, I felt very glad that I did not have to to do that because the people that came and did that were uh, were very good at that. And yeah. I looked at yeah, yeah. Uh, they had a whole thing where they were wearing these like yes harnesses. And they, and they there's carry two them. guys, and they yeah. connect. So there's like basically kind of like heavy duty fabric that goes from you to me. It's almost like, imagine yeah. we're wearing, James, you and I were wearing overalls and woven into those overalls is a hammock. And you and I are <laughs> the two trees holding up the hammock, but also in that hammock, refrigerator. Yeah, when, <laughs> when we had our new new kitchen done and they brought in the appliances, I watched them do that. And it's... But they did that up to the third floor in yeah, a it the, blows new, my mind. tiny the, New England the, staircase that is like, you know... T- technically probably is probably i don't know let's not say that it's not up to code but you know it's not, like, the, not up this to code. sounds um, this sounds like a taskmaster task but also <laughs> the one that they were then told that they couldn't do because yes. they uh somebody got injured well no like like you have to move a refrigerator and then like it's like the smart person's like i just called refrigerator movies <laughs> there was Why that would you one that season yourself? with <laughs> the guy who spent money like once an episode on his task and i think i feel like they they're i i think you know, I know they say everything's in the task, but that I feel was like Bob Mortimer, right? I, think. I forget. I think the one Bob thing Mortimer he did that I Biden. liked that he uh, he did rent a gong. I thought that was pretty good. But then he did a lot of other things where he just kind of threw money at stuff. Uh, and I, I kind of thought that like there must be some basically unwritten rules now about like you can't have your phone on you and you can't, you know, you can't just throw money at something. Uh for for certain tasks because it would not be in the spirit of the but, but i i like the ones that involve you know like somebody phoning up greg's mum and yes hiding yes. in his wardrobe or whatever it was he's you, you remember know, the one where, where they got uh <laughs> alex's like like atm code or something or alex's credit card i think, from I think that wife. was a yeah. very early one yeah um, it was very early and so i like anything where alex is legitimately surprised <laughs> that they have gotten one over on him wasn't it, there was one very early on where somebody uh, was sending rude texts to Greg Davies for like six months? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and he did not actually understand that that was related to the show. Um, I would just so. assume. I feel like if I were Greg, well, maybe it was that early on to me would in some way, was not, yeah. you know, yeah, and, his and life just, was not all Taskmaster yet. Taskmaster um, was like tucked away on a tiny channel and was yeah. not like 
a uh, big thing. Have you watched any of the new season? I'm I have still watched. Season behind. Dan is always behind. It's very disappointing. Uh, it's so hard to be friends with him. I have watched uh, <laughs> the new episode of the new season. I will say, just the uh, the preview image for the uh, episode of the new season was delightful. I guess I won't spoil that for Dan, but just like the image that came up uh, on YouTube for like what this episode is of was uh, uh, comical. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting crop of people. I'm not quite sold on them yet. Um, I feel like that's, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty much impossible to be sold on them from uh, episode one. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. I don't know. Nick, I'm, you know, because I'm a filthy American, the only one I know is Nick Muhammad. So, um, I mean, honestly, yeah. um, other than Steve Pemberton, who is like from the League of Gentlemen, which was a comedy thing with Mark Gatiss. And I think people. you're thinking of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Uh -huh. uh, no. No. Uh, yes. um, yeah, get Sean Connery on Taskmaster. Um, uh, yeah, so the, it, it's, I don't know many of the people either, but mm -hmm. uh, Nick Mohammed, obviously, uh, and who's, who's got an interesting thing going on with his. Uh, yes. His choice is about. Uh, is he dressed as a vampire? I've seen clips. He yes, is dressed yes. as a vampire with like corpse paint on his face, uh, which is. I mean, I feel like I'm always a little curious about the the because I think they don't record all the tasks on the same day. But no, they I think the same. It's a short, small number of days. A right? small yeah. number of days, and the people who are doing the tasks basically have seem to have kind of a wardrobe that they wear for doing the tasks, and people do some strange things right like yes. there's some people that Jackets i mean it's or boiler yeah, suits some or... people very formal right like there's some yes. people and then some people much more kind of for for activity kind of you know jumpsuit looks um and yeah and nick muhammad is basically cosplaying as as count dracula uh like a you know like a an old-timey horror vampire he thought he was on uh he thought he was on a show called drac master drac master <laughs> um, so um I think actually, Dan, Dan, the joke you were looking for was Drac Race, um, but that's um, okay. Fair enough. Um, uh, yeah, um, uh, um, I don't know. I am. Uh, I like Taskmaster. I'm interested to see uh, how it'll go. So, yeah. yeah I built the roof to my uh, house. I'm now trying to figure out how to fix it. Ah, that's the roof. Okay. That's what these red, red slanty bits are. Um, I was trying to work out what they were. They looked um, flag like. I continue to be. Uh, stymied by my choice to build lego sets that are 40 percent black legos on uh black <laughs> particle board Did, desk. didn't we talk um, about this last last yeah time? i think i had a plan last time and i totally forgot to implement the plan to put something down so that uh black legos did not get completely lost on this but you know it's it's what i got um so, so are you spending $360 tomorrow on another Lego castle? I don't think that I am spending $360 tomorrow on another Lego castle. I had not planned ahead for that. You mean budget uh, for that? Yeah, I did not plan ahead. Tomorrow is uh, the D&D &D set releases yes. is, yeah. is, is, is what's happening. Um, and I did not... I didn't plan. I feel like there's such a rich vein there for them to only do one set. You know, like I feel like D and D and Lego has such a good crossover mm -hmm. where honestly they should be like, why don't we just enable like playing more D and D with Legos? Cause there is an adventure in the zillion. Yeah, I know set. there is an adventure in there, but like, honestly, like if I were them, I'd be making this big deal. The but I, I wonder if part of it is the, the Hasbro as the parent company of D and D is like, no, we're not gonna license our stuff to like someone else to make toys out of it. Like we'll make yeah. our own toys because we're a toy company. But no, honestly, they, they also don't seem like they've no, done that. Great at, great at yeah, um, I mean, like toys. they're. Um, they I don't a, if... Does Hasbro have a Lego knockoff, like Mega Blocks or whatever? Like, I don't, I don't know. If they I don't know. Something. Uh -huh. Um, I I don't know if you followed the stuff with um, Baldur's Gate uh, three. Oh, the Larian saying they're not making anymore. Yeah, basically Larian saying you know. We're we're not going to make any more Baldur's Gate three. We're not making any DLC. In fact, we're never doing anything with the uh, D and D license again. And yeah, but they uh, did they did clarify that was just because they were burned out on it. And they wanted to go do other stuff, which I totally get if you've invested this much time and energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, I think it's also to do with the fact that you know uh, Wizards fired all the people that they were kind of liaising with, um, mm. and probably made it quite difficult. But I have, I've actually, I 
So since the last time we spoke, I have played Baldur's Gate three again, <laughs> the entire thing. Um, the entire, how many, not how the many, entire entire thing though, because like I mean, honestly, my wife and I have been playing this game. We put almost a hundred hours into this game. Yes, that well, so my first time through was one hundred and ten hours, and the second time through, I finished it in sixty five. Um, because I knew where everything was. Well, sure. And yeah. I knew what all the, the optimal That's why solutions I don't really play were. Stuff, like... But the thing is, if you play it with the so you, there's another there's an origin character called the Dark Urge. Which oh yes, is, I heard about this. Which is like where you play the evil version. Well, you're you're you basically so there's like there's a. <laughs> I think I know the the twist. Yes. <laughs> um. But th there's there's points in it like where. Alfira, who's the the bard, comes yeah. to your camp and is like, "I would really like to join you in your adventure." And you're like, "Sure, come in." And then the next time you sleep, you wake up, and you know there's bits of her around camp, and you're like arm deep in blood, not okay. remembering anything that's happening. That sounds like uh, a James Thompson character. Um, <laughs> um, but arm then deep in blood, the James you, Thompson story. <laughs> you have the option of. Uh, embracing the dark urge or f fighting against the dark urge. And so I did the fighting against the dark urge kind of playthrough mm -hmm. and it reveals a whole lot of like stuff, which um, it kind of recontextualizes a lot of things in the game. Um, how far through are you? uh i mean like i said we put about i think we put about 90 hours in we are so still... you're just this was a jrpg you're just getting into it yeah, yeah right uh we're in the third act we're well into the third act we're pretty close to the end but we're still sort of mopping up side quests basically um yeah i'm trying to think how to ask questions that are not in any way um have you met a dragon yes <laughs> uh a dragon who lives underground yes you're trying to figure out if i know the true identity of a character yes yes i do um that was spoiled for me by my wife who looked it up he's like oh apparently this is like referenced somewhere that it might be this person and she's like i don't think that comes up in the plot though and then later i was like no this is actually a pretty major plot detail she's like yeah sorry about that <laughs> um but the the playthrough adds the the dark edge playthrough adds uh, more information to that mm -hmm. uh and the the one bit which i i i don't think this is really a spoiler this is kind of just uh people putting uh things together the the nautiloid that you start out on mm -hmm. at the beginning that's the emperors that makes sense based <laughs> on what's happening in the rest of the the story i mean like otherwise why were you there right like yeah um, but I, I, it was, it was quite interesting, the differences yeah. that when you're playing through and it, and it's, it, you get some things kind of from a different perspective. Well, I, and or... it's one of the things that even having put this much time into this game, I do ask questions about like, well, you know, what if this wasn't my party makeup most of the time? Like I, you know, we use the same NPCs most of the time, not all the yeah. time, but most of the time. And you're like, we only have two NPCs because it's then my wife's character and my character. And we're like, oh man, like what if you have this NPC or what if you don't have this NPC yeah. or what if like, yeah. Like how did you miss out on things? It's like, there's definitely stuff like you can't do I, everything. It's, it's impossible. I think I had also missed one play flu. Yeah. I had missed the entire of the underdark. Oh, on yeah. my first playthrough, which turns out there's quite a lot. Happening there's a lot there. there. Yeah. We did that. Yeah. I, and like, it's not necessary, right? Like you don't need it to beat the game. Like there's a lot of bits like that, I think, where it's like you can go to this or you can not go to this. It may or may not matter, uh, but it ad like adds up. Like for example, there's a whole encounter with a hag, mm -hmm. uh, and that it comes up later too. Like and you, but I can easily imagine that you just missed that entire thing. Like, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't impact the overall plot of the game. But yeah, um, I, yeah, I, and I'm curious, like. Because you can sort of redeem a lot of the NPCs along the yes. way. Yeah. Uh, and I'm curious what happens if you go the opposite way and you do not redeem them. Um, because the, there's a lot of, there's so many variables. Anyway, yeah. all of this to say, after finishing Baldur's Gate 3 for the second time, I decided 
what I shall do now is I shall play Divinity Original Sin 2 again. Which is by the same developer, right? Which is the previous thing. And it's, you can tell, like going back to it, it's like, oh yeah, this feels almost like it's the same engine. Um, and it's uh, it's clearly not as polished and it doesn't have the sort of cutscenes and the... Yeah. Uh, but it is voice acted and... and the, it's, yeah, the closest thing, I mean, honestly, like playing through this, it's easy to tell to me that like, I believe the first two Baldur's Gate game were Bioware. Yes, I think so. Yeah, and it's like this feels, even Baldur's Gate 3, feels like a bioware game to me like uh, the the first two don't don't really play the same you yeah. know i think i from what i remember it's a long time since i played i think it was real time combat rather than turn based oh that's that's yeah that's tricky um too. but all the larian stuff is exactly this kind of turn based combat well and it makes sense cuz like especially i think that works well with the dnd stuff because dnd is inherently turn based yeah, um, yeah, and they. I think part of the thing they said in their comp, their comments about like why they were struggling with this was like they spent a while like adapting Five E engine. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't quite work in a video yeah. game setting, and they did very well. They changed a lot of stuff that makes it more fun. <laughs> like, yes. there's stuff that in D and D would be like, oh, that's a full action, and you can't do that. Yeah. Like, and you're like, well, that's stupid. I can only do like one thing at a time then. And like, oh, yeah, it's like, okay, forever. you can have, you get bonus actions and you can do them, do more stuff with them. And some spells have been rejiggered and stuff like that. But like, I can't even imagine, like I played Neverwinter Nights years ago, which adapted 3.5 edition. And that was like, I barely even remember how that worked because that was so different and so complicated. Yeah. Um. So it's interesting going just going back and seeing their previous thing, which is like from I can't remember it's you know it's twenty sixteen or or earlier or something, and it's like yeah, we might have to wait you know like another six years or something. Oh, something yeah. Else. Yeah. <laughs> it's like how old will I be at this point? Well, I just saw there was a story this week about the a delay, like people freaking out because uh, the next GTA game had been delayed i mean quote unquote it's not i don't think there's an official release day out for it yeah but like people point out like this happens with every rockstar game because yes. they're so big and so yeah. complicated and they get so stressed about it that they're like it just always gets pushed back so that's why they only make a game like every five years is it even yeah. when was the last time we got a big rockstar game red, well, dead, red dead probably two, yeah yeah which, which, was, which well that's probably a while ago now yeah two or three yeah. years ago i think i played that during the pandemic now I'm looking. There was a recent pre-release. 18, yeah. So that's almost, that's six years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, and I think the thing with the, the, the Rockstar stuff is I am really curious what the tone of the next GTA is yes. going to be. Because if you're trying to like satirize American um, culture, politics, whatever, I, I mean... And do it on a scale where you might have written the script like eight years ago. Yeah, it's honestly even even the um there are things in Baldur's Gate 3 that feel like a pretty direct shot at I mean stuff that feels very timely that is clearly not stuff that is like it's some stuff that it's like, okay, those are simmering things that have always, you know, have been an issue for a long time politically, but they are also stuff more recently that has like ramped that up mm. and feels more timely, even though like it's impossible. They could not have known about this other than the fact that the geopolitical events of the world seem to be trending in that direction. <laughs> like I walked through a crowd of people today uh, extolling the virtues of the, uh, the leader of Baldur's Gate. And I was like, ah, oh, this is like freaking like make Baldur's Gate great again. <laughs> people. <out here." laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've seen, you know, the. I think all we've seen is a trailer for yeah. the game, which seemed like the tone of it was quite similar to previous ones. Which yes, I just don't see it. I don't see it working. But you know, particularly if this game gets delayed beyond the next election. Um, oh yeah, definitely, it will definitely not be out before the next election. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I I enjoy those. Like the last, I played the, only the two, four and five, I think were the only ones I've actually played. Um, 
I think I've any. played almost all of them. I mean, I played the original Gr- Grand Theft Auto. I played the original like a one a million down. years ago um, at yeah. someone's house or something. There was now. another, I think GTA 2 was also top down, but it had much fancier graphics. And then GTA 3 was for the PlayStation 2. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I think I, I that played was like three the onwards. first big hit for the PlayStation 2. And then there were uh, several sequels to there it. Was there was Vice City, Vice, which was Vice the, City. Oh. which was you know appealed to the 80s kids yes. in me oh. because it was you know all the all the good music um but uh yeah i i i, pl- I liked five I'm trying to work out numbers yeah i liked five probably like the, the heist most. the heist stuff was really good yes i thought that was really interesting i fun. mean i think the gameplay is always pretty interesting to them um assuming you're okay with you know ultra violence um i'm always somewhat amazed i mean I played Grand Theft Auto Five, which came out how long ago? Um, Twenty sixteen. You know, and I oh, played really the single late? player no, game. Twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. Okay. Yeah. Eleven years ago, right? Yeah. And I mean, I think that must have been what that was like the big hit that for the Xbox three sixty era, right? Um, uh, I guess it before. was. I... Yeah. So, hey. and I mean, mm. I remember playing the single camp- player campaign all the way through, which takes quite a while. And you know, I think there was there was some multiplayer but it wasn't running finished. around shooting when, stuff, and yeah, the, a big part of the multiplayer thing wasn't done because I remember yeah, you and yeah. playing that. And I remember they to kept being it. like, "There will be heists eventually," yeah. but I'm always kind of amazed that like people are still playing. And I know part of it is it, it came to PC much later, so but like, there, my understanding is there's still like a significant thriving online yes. community for I, like, I think people playing Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Um, don't Erica and Stephen and Eric play? Eric and Stephen play like I think they mainly just it's almost like online. They're playing. playing I was gonna they, say yeah, they're out. lopping in. Uh, I feel like they're playing it slightly like they're playing Second Life or something. Uh, which I believe I think I looked up the other day because uh, I saw it in a TV show and I was like, does Second Life still exist? It appears to still exist. Uh, wow. I was like, wow, had not thought about that in over a decade. Um, yeah. So and I think like the the online thing makes way more money than anything else at this point. Yeah. Um. So you know they'll have to do the same. Selling kind of loot thing. boxes is uh you know. The- yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, I I mean you know. It's kind of a Scottish product, so I will support oh. it. Oh, is that how that works? Do yes. You support all Scottish products. Oh. I mean, yeah, and not some of Sean Connery's uh, mm. choices, <laughs> uh, but uh, generally. Generally, uh, okay. I will say I did buy another video game that I have not played yet, um, which was, uh, but it was. I'd been like wanting something a little bit, to, like realizing Baldur's Gate was the end was in sight. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, so I get something get else ready. to palate cleanse or whatever. So I did buy that last Assassin's Creed game. Which one what is, is that? Mirage. Mirage. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. I am Cause... way behind on Assassin's Creed. Oh, games. I don't care. I, I don't think follow... I have to. I think. I mean, I think at I'm one point I played the all plot. the Assassin's Creed games, and then it was like I will play the like main Assassin's Creed games, and now I think I have to declare bankruptcy on that I, I, that's what i like honestly i feel like i don't care enough about the the ongoing plot, <laughs> plot. quote unquote I, I, plot. That's i okay. mean i have to i have to read a wikipedia article to understand half of them when i'm playing them so <laughs> i i enjoyed i think i enjoyed odyssey the most which was the I ancient greek one bought the ancient egypt one didn't finish it i bought the greek one haven't started it and then my I think wife there's a Viking the one. Norse, and then, yeah, my wife yeah. started the Viking one and I, was not as into it. So she gave the, up on the, it. The best parts of that are when you're kind of like doing Asgardy things mm. in it. But well, I was um, interested in Mirage because A, the I like the Middle Eastern setting, sort of the historical setting. Also, everybody kept talking about it's a shorter game and a little they reined it I like in. And I was like, I'm okay, actually good. totally here Sold. for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I mean, aside from like the hundred and ten hours of Baldur's Gate or whatever, if somebody says, Yeah, this game is two hours long, it's like, okay, you know, Sold. you have like, to yeah. Yeah, we're, like I mean, we're very I think they're saying people. it's like a ten-hour oh. game or something, as opposed yeah. to like a forty-hour game, and it's like, See, tell I'm okay me with more. That. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I don't. Have, uh, I I finally started. Uh, you know, I bought my PS5 a couple months ago, and like, I got the PS5 to play the Spider-Man games. Spider-Man, man, Spider- Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. And so I played the Spider-Man one right away. That was like, I knew that was what I wanted to do. 
Uh, and then I wait and I, I bought the, all the Spider-Man games, but I was like, I didn't want to be like, I have now played, I've spent a zillion dollars on this console and I've played the games <laughs> I want to play. And so I'm done. So I've been trying to like alternate, trickle them out. But I did recently, I played the Miles Morales game, I think around Christmas and now I'm playing Spider-Man two and they're very good. Uh, and you know, they are, they have that Assassin's Creed batman game feel where yes. it's like you There's travel all around you yep. and you do a million things the jedi survivor games are a little similar yep. and i will say i think the secret of the spider-man games that so somehow no one else had discovered uh before now is that like they make traveling yeah, very swinging enjoyable city swing yeah. around the city in spo very minor spoiler for something that happens minutes into spider-man 2 you can kind of glide now and it's like it's real fun to just travel around the city. Yeah. And when you make a game that has like a million little things that you're going to have to like cr crisscross the city a zillion times to, to do it, don't make it a chore. Make I it mean, fun I, places. It was a thing I loved about the Red Dead Redemption games, which was the scenery. It was such a beautiful game that like I didn't mind just be like, oh, I'm going to hop on this horse and like ride out into like the desert I, or whatever because it looks great. <laughs> I think I remember with the, the Red Dead 2 games, it's like it starts and you're sort of tramping slowly through snow for about <laughs> half an hour. And I was like, oh my God, this is so tedious. But <laughs> it does open up. And and I, I like that game, you know, like, um, I don't know. I don't know if I should spoil the end of it, but <laughs> it, it was like, it's not exactly the most cheery of games. Oh no, Red Dead Redemption 2, it is, it definitely has a, a sad ending. I yes, think, I mean I, I recall Red Dead Redemption One having a yeah. Sad these are not too. they're not game like the yeah. fundamental point of those games is like we glorify the Wild West and it was not these are, great. I, these, I, I, <laughs> these are like kind of the Deadwood Wild West, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think I think like I was like okay, I got to the end of this thing, and then I think there was a title card that came up that said Epilogue One, and I was just like. Epilogue one. <laughs> and it's like, oh no, that implies oh, yeah. many things. You um, like that? You're gonna, character lo you're gonna love epilogues. our Curse yeah. of Strahd adventure ending. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it. I think it depends on the game and it, and as you know, I as I have put like nearly two hundred hours into Baldur's Gate. Um, clearly, there's some things that will, uh, you know, take you through those kind of hours. Um, I got I I will admit I got a little bored in the Spider-Man game um in the second one. I really enjoyed oh. the first two. I'm only about I, halfway through it, but um I'm really enjoying it. I like the gameplay, I like the story. Uh mm -hmm. so Yeah, no, I, really I mean want, you know. I it, it does some interesting things uh but there was there was there was something about it that the I think I wasn't enjoying the combat quite as much. Okay. Um I think in some ways, honestly, I felt the that game in some ways went faster for me, and I don't know if it was just because you do know I was the environment, more versed right? with everything. In the combat, but they also don't, it just like, they don't like it is. I will say probably as a sequel, it is a little disappointing in that there's nothing super innovative, right? Yes, I think about the Batman games where it's like they kept making them bigger and bigger, and they they make the map bigger. It's Manhattan and Brooklyn and parts of Queens, but it's like you know. It's 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 still fundamentally it's, the same game it's on the same fundamentally engine. The same game. I, yeah. I also never I think in the second game I or like Spider-Man 2, I never really learned the city properly, which what? I think I did in the other ones. And okay. now it's just like, you know, go here, uh point in the you know, vague direction of mm -hmm. thing and go and uh uh I did collect all like all the spiders and all the all the other um things in that game, but yeah, I, I'm not sure. Like I've I've ended up playing another Larian game. Uh and I don't know if I'll finish it. I wanted to just kind of like get through the first act or so and see how it feels like a Baldur's Gate game. Um because I suspect they'll do a Divinity Original Sin 3, probably mm -hmm. as their next mm -hmm. thing. Although I would like them to do because they're listening to this stream. Yeah. yeah. Um I would like them to do something sci-fi as a as a as a little change as a little treat. I am hoping that somebody like I am hoping Wizards does a good job of like something you know another D and D video game because they've their track record has not been the best in that. I I just don't 
I mean, like if you're if if Wizards comes to you and says, you know, we would like you to make Baldur's Gate four. Well, but it's in house now is the thing, and like it's not. I think they have an in house team working on some of it. And it's not necessarily has to be Baldur's Gate four, but like there are so many other interesting settings and so many other interesting yeah. places. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like I'd love to see them explore that a little bit more. And because D and D is hot for lack of a better word it feels like there's definitely opportunity there like when you're something licensing your ip wins tons of games of the year award like it shows you that you can make a great game in this <laughs> environment you just gotta have the willing to spend the money but with, you know is that can anybody else repeat that is i think the, the I, question i think you can i mean i i it's not impossible but yeah it's a hard it's a hard cha- it's a big challenge but yeah not impossible um, uh, yeah, I'm sure the next Larian game will, you know, it'll say from the makers of Baldur's Gate 3 at the top. Of course, um, yeah. Uh, and then at the bottom, we don't need to pay any money to Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so I need, a, I need like some one hour or two hour games that are just uh, little puzzly things or story things or... Yeah, that is that is a challenge sometimes of finding things that like that's why I like playing board games and stuff because it like scratches that itch on a daily basis but doesn't like require huge amounts mm. of time. Yeah, yeah. Um uh, well, it looks like you've got some kind of roof there. Yeah. Or it's, it's possibly some kind of spaceship when you turned it sideways. <laughs> that's a you know, it's a wizard's house. Oh. It is extremely house like. I realized I had like just when I built the roof, I had like just arbitrarily opened the instruction booklet to toward the end of it and then had to go back like 30 steps because I was like, oh, I need to build all the stuff that the roof clips to. I'm I'm great <laughs> at following instructions. Um so you know, everything's great. Um I am nearing the end of the uh there's I feel like not too many pieces left here, but also uh, enough pieces that I'm worried I've done things wrong. So, you know. <laughs> That roof is not to code. Yeah, probably not. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I think I probably am gonna buy the stupid D and D set because, um, I need a little treat, and uh, yeah, nobody treat. can say no to me right now. No one can say no to you. Do you have a place to put that giant? No, with the absolutely on not. I do not. Um, mm. But. You know that that's I feel uh, that is a problem for future James, and I'm sure he will not be mad at me for my poor decisions. Sure, uh, surely not. I, um, I have spent the last like uh, month or whatever in VR, um, like oh, the, just straight, <laughs> pretty much. Um, you know, it's much preferable to the real the real R. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but, we just call that R, just so you're clear. <laughs> and uh, but this is a Vision Pro, so I can actually develop stuff for it. And I made a VR. I'm making a VR version of my Picalco Bay screen, which is really weird. That you can basically just go around, move around this environment that I built, and you know. There's, there is a giant dragon, which is why I was thinking of it. And, you know, stand at the foot of giant dragon and look up at it. Um, How far are you away conceptually from creating an entire RPG in the about screen? <laughs> I mean, like, have I considered building the kind of systems that would let you yeah. do that? Absolutely. Do I, mean, I have... until, until you're saying, I'm not going to do that, it remains a possibility is what I'm saying. It remains a product in our lineup. Yeah. Yes. Um yeah, I mean at the moment I'm I'm just I'm just trying to learn things. Like I made uh virtual hands made of bananas the other day, okay. which was um uh, interesting. Some people said we shouldn't do it. James said <laughs> why not? Well, I wanted to play with the hand tracking and you get all these points of data out of you know where all the joints are. I just don't understand what things. led you to bananas. <laughs> well, <laughs> because it was like I needed to attach some geometry to those points to see well, that you was know, the geometry he had to available. see it, and like why not a banana? Why uh, not which... a banana, Dan? I guess that's a fair question. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so th- th- there is something strange about being able to actually build your own VR um, mm-hmm. 
stuff uh and it's kind of fun in in a in a this is my game that i will be playing from now on i think uh just because it's uh yeah, it, it scratches a weird itch of being able to make a space that you can have a wander around it so uh yeah yeah No, and it's it's not too different than uh, playing with Legos. I think I was gonna say I I do feel like they haven't done a really great job of Legos in VR. Maybe no, it's the tactile nature of it is it does it is it untranslatable? I can't decide. I, I mean, think... I think I think Minecraft is the non-tactile version. Of yeah, it, I guess right? it's got too much for me. I, yeah, I don't, I, well, I don't need all the like resource need... management and everything. Yeah, you you weren't. Yeah, I don't. I mean, you don't anything. need to do that stuff. You can just run it in whatever creative mode and just. build I guess. things I guess. um yeah I, I mean i think i mean you can get minecraft lego now as well so i forgot <laughs> everything 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 comes together eventually the, it's like what was that word game that really took off that was just scrabble um uh words with friends words with friends words yeah. with friends and now you can get like words with friends branded scrabble in yes. a kind of so i'm so tired I'm yeah. so tired. <laughs> the uh, it's, snake is eating itself. Um, what is that? Uh, uh, capitalism is happening. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, All right, I'm good. very close to the end of the uh, the, the model. I am uh, backtracking to consult places that I overlook things. You seem distract. to have a lot of little, yeah, bricks. a lot of little bits left. Uh, so working on that. Um, yeah, <laughs> pay pay no attention here. <laughs> um. Uh. I think I am not, uh, I mean, some of it is the danger of multitasking and uh, some of it I think is uh, my fading eyesight and some of it is that I'm probably just like, nah, you know, I just, I don't always look at the instructions so much as I just look at the picture and figure out what is missing as opposed to consulting the little diagram where it shows you exactly what to use, um, which is, uh, I, I think, a, not actually a helpful way to build Legos. So. It's just a building through vibes. Yeah, you know, uh, vibes, man. Uh, vibes, man. Lego vibes. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> always a good sign. Always a good sign. Uh oh, but yeah, yeah. There, there was a rumor going around that there were going to be uh, a series of Lego D and D collectible minifigures. Yeah, I mean, I saw they had a promotional image with the. gelatinous cube which is available in the zillion dollar set uh but this was like you know the, just just that <laughs> but it <laughs> was like you know the 16 or 12 or whatever figures mm -hmm. of a variety of things and i was looking i i don't know if this was something that there was there was a picture of the sheet that you normally mm -hmm. get in these things but i don't know if it was just something that somebody made up and faked um which you know you can't put it past the internet uh yeah. but i like the look of it because it was like It was just like what I do with the the D and D uh, yeah. Lego stuff that I was doing. It's like, yeah, give me all these little parts. Let me make weird characters. And uh... yeah, I, well, I, I've I've prototyped my next D and D character in Baldur's Gate. So oh, okay. good. Okay. What kind of uh, monster are they? Um... <laughs> They're not a monster. They oh. are. Um, Well, I think <laughs> <laughs> they're not a monster yet. Let's yeah. I think that's all we can say. It's not it's not baked in, but you know. Um, but there's gonna be a backstory. I, I think that um they're what did I say? A paladin. It's it's a huh. you're playing a paladin? What kind of paladin, James? <laughs> <laughs> well, a level two, so I haven't taken an oath yet. Okay. Oathless Paladin. I really feel you like know. they should start you at level one with the oath for the. Like, which you know, which they... like going in, you can't just be like, "Yeah, I'm kind of major in Paladin," but I really haven't decided. <laughs> you know, keep your options open. It's I, I just feel like doing good, and uh, I haven't quite decided which kind of good yet. Um, yeah, you know, non-denominational good. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, I, and I think they believe that they're human. Oh, great! <laughs> great. 
<laughs> Why? Hold on. I need to consult my rules about what have I written that James is and is not allowed to do for this. You told me that I just I told couldn't you. be a sociopath. Yeah. And true. that was the only guidelines given. So, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Lawful good paladin. Awful good paladin. Got it. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. I'm moving over here because it's slightly more ergonomically feasible than uh, being crouched over my Lego desk. But I built a wizard house. I hope you're happy. Uh, we we are happy. happy. Yeah. Um, yeah, if I do buy the, the Lego D&D &D thing, I'm not sure that that is a thing that I could do on stream because it is enormous. Um, I think it's possible... Do you know how many pieces was in your castle? Uh, nope, but I can find out. Uh, Let's see, if I, I feel like work. I thought they were somewhat similar. Uh, so the Lion Knight's castle, which is behind me in my living room on the shelf mm -hmm. there, uh, is a four hundred dollar Lego set with uh, four thousand five hundred and fourteen pieces. Mm -hmm. Are okay, you calculating that... the cost to piece? That is, a thing that, that, that is a thing that is a very common thing that people calculate, Dan. Okay. Uh, for people who do kit bashing, who, mm. you know, are buying it for pieces. Uh, and I, I think, I, I know, I think at the, the low end, there are things where there are sets that are annoying uh, cost of pieces where they're, you know, it's like, I think it shouldn't like, actually be $40 or, or whatever. Um, I think a lot of the license stuff ends up being ridiculous. Um, mm. Like, because there, there was a... A Marvel set recently, which was like this tiny little spaceship that was eighty dollars, and a lot of people were unhappy. Mm -hmm. But the the D and D set is it's only three thousand seven hundred and forty five pieces. So I think there's okay, so not as good cost to uh, piece uh, ratio. Um, what are the dimensions of it? Um, um I th oh, if you're on the Lego site, it tells you in the. Um, well, I'm on the verge, which oh. I don't think has necessarily oh. that information. Um, does it? Nope, it doesn't. So let's look it up. I do like my little goose arm for Lego cam. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think I need, you know, my goal uh, is to someday have an office as a dedicated workspace, and then I will have uh, a dedicated more spaces. Lego space is what you're saying. Well, or even, you know, I got, I mean, Dan, you've got, I assume that's a Billy bookcase behind you. It I have a Billy bookcase off to the side. Mine's full of graphic novels. Uh, the dream would someday to be have a second Billy bookcase that uh, could have some Legos. I, I do have, have my many one, Legos on my small... one shelf of Legos is back there. Yeah. But yeah. I, I've now I've now filled that shelf, so I have not added any Legos to it since I filled that shelf. Because where are they going to go? You could put a second Billy bookcase behind that chair behind you. Um, you know, I don't think you understand how the office works. No, I actually <laughs> yeah. can't put a second Billy bookcase there because what you can't see is that is there a closet uh, there? There's or a or closet like... door there, so that's going to be a oh. real problem. Well, look, you got a closet. You're you got plenty of space. Yeah. You just nail that Billy bookcase to the front of the door of the closet, yeah. and then now you're, you're sorted. Talking. Yeah, now it's, pr it's practically uh, a secret passage then. It's just a oh, very, you know very heavy secret passage and all your books fall off when you use it. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, no. the details. To answer the question, it is 19 inches high, 15 inches wide, and 12 inches deep. Uh, the 12 um, inches deep, that's a foot deep. The uh, Lion's Knight Castle dimensions they give me, and I'm a little curious about this because it has multiple configurations. Like I have it kind of in open kind of this wall format versus it can fit together and be a little bit more of a square, but that square was so big, it would not fit on that shelf behind me, uh, is 15 inches tall, 18 inches wide, and uh, 13 inches deep. The the shelf that it is on, I think, is 12 inches deep, so it kind of, like, hangs off of it a little bit. Um, so, as, yeah. That's a challenge. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's a rough life that we have opted into, the Lego life. Uh <laughs> There is, I feel like they, at least as far as uh, extracting as much money out of Tony as possible, they mistime things a little bit with, there is a $300 medieval town square set mm. yeah, that I think so would, that. would pair nicely with a castle, but like, uh, you know, if you have a choice of medieval town square or D&D &D castle, 
even though the D&D castle is hundred dollars more, I think that's, that's where you put your, your, your pennies. I, um, I, you know. I thought you were going to say, you know, if it's a choice between medieval town square and eating. Uh, oh, well, no, you know, no, we haven't entered uh, into that. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, there's, there's a very complicated spreadsheet that makes sure that that's not a, a challenge. There were people that are like, Oh, you're going to do the Rivendell one yet next. And uh, the Rivendell set is very nice. Uh, honestly, that one's $500. Uh, it looks yeah. very ornate and like I look at that I'm, like like the Rivendell set has this beautiful like uh, tile roof over the like place where they have their meeting and like each little tile is a separate Lego square and I look at that I'm like oh god I don't want to <laughs> you know these ornate trees with many individual leaves and I'm like that's 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 a lot people um, also yeah it's $500 and <laughs> quite big um you know if, if you donate five hundred dollars to tony's um uh what is lego it? fun what? well yeah but what's the link oh uh, people can go to give tony money dot fun give uh, money usually give money tony that's not what i said um but uh mainly people purchase cups of coffee for me there in return for uh Posts and puzzles and other things like that, because uh, I post a weekly connections puzzle uh, for the small number of people that overlap in watching Tony and James and Dan hang out uh, who are, don't already know about Tony's weekly connections <laughs> puzzle. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you know, I think you got to be strategic about what that's a collection is curated versus just buy every Lego set that comes across your uh yeah, I mean, I'm mostly... what I tell myself as I can't buy all these Lego sets. Um, <laughs> I, I mostly buy the Star Wars spaceships because yeah, yeah. spaceships. I will uh, say I was is this one that people were complaining about being too expensive for sets? Because there's a there's a lovely $85 Millennium Falcon that they just released uh that looks nice, but it does seem kind of expensive in terms of how what it costs for uh what it I like I like it as like it's like a mini scale. It's not a mini oh, figure right, scale. Yes. It's like it's it looks like it's probably just you know like six or seven inches. Uh, but it, it doesn't look. I mean, it looks dense. It's like yeah. covered in lots of little bits. But it, it has doesn't... all the little greebles that the Millennium Falcon has. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't strike me as uh, how many pieces is it? Does it nine twenty one? I guess. I mean, it's like yeah. I'm sure it's somewhere. Uh, there has, is a, there's an equation the, where people the, tell there you is that's the, good about. the yeah there is like probably a table of mm -hmm. um cost per piece and I then always, it's like i love the photos that they release on the lego site of like the guy the, playing with it the guy playing with it who's wearing like a, like so a classy looking he's got a turtleneck bowls he's got his... a he's got a shelf in the back that's full of books and stuff and it's like this lego set is the one stupid thing he owns in his house <laughs> everything else super classy uh he's off for his job uh, what does he look he's like a paralegal or an architect something real fancy uh yeah i like and that he's, he's trying to put one it on there star wars set he's got like the little stand there but he also yeah. looks like he's picked it up to admire it and he's like yeah. yes I did yeah. a good job with this. Yeah, I I did a good job with this building this. I'm gonna go later, like uh, look at my nice earthware over here. Um, yeah. Oh, and there's a whole bunch of sets of, of that same scale, which are list at the bottom. So there's a um, yes, they were blockade released. runner and the, the blockade runner is kind of cool. There's the executor uh, superstar destroyer, and then there's a set that I don't think anyone was asking for. Uh, in the I mean. I'm pretty into Star Wars. Dan and I have a weekly Star Wars podcast where we shout at each other about Star Wars. Dan, <laughs> without looking it up and hopefully yes. without having it looked up recently, could you name General Grievous's ship? General Grievous has a ship. General Grievous, it appears <laughs> he's a robot. He doesn't. It appears a, no, a bunch. Robot, I think it main, I think it only appears in Clone Wars. Does it appear in the movies? Picture, I think I can picture like the bridge of it from Clone Wars. Okay, I don't think it appe appears in the movies. All right. Yeah. They have like a, like a, you know, like a generic imperial sort of like, I, I keep thinking the Devastator, but that's the ship. From, I will tell you the name of the ship uh, is much cooler than you would think. Honestly, oh, okay. is it cooler it, it name than General Grievous? And it feels like it wasn't his ship originally and he bought it from somebody else because <laughs> yeah, it, you got it like, it was like, it, like from Darth Vader or something. Uh, Cause it's got a great name, but uh, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't think anyone was like, when will we get a Lego set of, uh, you know, General Grievous's ship? Um, is he called something other than General Grievous's ship, right? Yeah. Yes. 
the <laughs> hammer of grievous the 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 smashing it is I called got the, nothing well you're, you're actually pretty close it's called the invisible hand oh, it yeah. apparently does appear That's the name in, of an episode even i think yeah in the, of clone wars uh i don't know it i think uh, it is it, it does apparently appear in um in revenge of the sith uh, does the that movie. suggest that he is a capitalist <laughs> <laughs> reference acknowledged um well he's got another uh another uh ship called animal spirits uh that's a deep econ reference wow, for people that is a deep econ um, reference. and uh yeah i i mean join me on the wealth of nations yeah i think it <laughs> i think it is indicative of unfortunately you know in part i think the ship design there are some good ships from the prequel trilogies but there's not as many of them and uh there are some ships that are blah whereas i feel like almost every ship from the original trilogy is uh, amazing you know, and it's pro- probably it's just something that is like they had one guy who was working on this thing for like forever. Well, right. And, and because and, like, and, and I think they also had lots of things where like people were making ships and like George Lucas would roll through and be like, yeah, that ship, that's Boba Fett's ship. I know you didn't think you were making Boba <laughs> Fett's ship. That's it. That's what I want. Right. I mean, I think there was, there was even also a, thing, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the blockade runner was a rejected Millennium Falcon ship. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, there was things a lot like that. Green, Greenfield. Right. Like, I mean, yeah, they, they did not. There have been many, many spaceship things since then, and it's hard. You can't like produce an mm. iconic spaceship every time out of the gate. They had the first no. advantage in some ways, and so yeah, it's always going to be a little trickier to come All back. Right. Uh, also, I I think it like cemented in our heads what cool spaceship is. Yeah, so, exactly. Like, yeah. It defined the genre, and you so. know, and I, and I and I feel like probably there was other things that made things that were. You know, if if they were they they kind of crowded the space, right? You know, uh, I think about your your Battlestar Galactica Viper felt very uh, Star X-ray, Wars influenced yeah. uh, mm. and things like that. But like you know, I think about so let's 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 round out our stream here ratings of uh, prequel era Star Wars ships. <laughs> um, Finally, my my meat and potatoes. Yeah, uh, this is you know we started with desk talk, then we went to Taskmaster. There was a lengthy Baldur's Gate uh, interchange, and now finally we're where we belong: rating uh, prequel Star Wars ships. Um, there, so we we first off, Invisible Hand. You you may wish to consult the uh, the s- look the internet for like. images of of it. Uh, pretty forgettable. <laughs> oh yeah, that's terrible. That's yeah. boring. That looks like it's from Stargate. Although it does have, uh, does it have an eye on it. Uh I mean, One it has the like the bridge. It looks the like bridge it has, like, is up face. at the top of a, of this long arm. That seems which, real bad. That seems. I mean, I think that comes up as a problem in one of the Clone Wars things. But yeah, that is always the tricky thing of where do you put your bridge on your spaceship uh, such that like it's super attackable. Um, all right. Yeah. So we don't we don't love the invisible hand. Uh, no, there is. I, I don't I don't even know if they have names, which is probably a sign that you're not already in great business. Uh, there's the weird kind of half donut uh, trade federation. Oh, uh, yeah. The trade federation starships. that are like, I, I mean, I think that let me say first off, they look like they're a space station, uh, but they're trying to pass oh, it off. They as do like have a, a battleship. They do have a they name, do. Tony, and it's relevant the, because it's in the, it's the, in Luke, the Luke Luke Hulk. Hulk. I didn't want to <laughs> say Luke or Hulk, but you forced me to say Luke or Hulk. It, Here we are. It feels like maybe it's a little... I don't want to say it. Uh, <laughs> uh, you have to run around in one of those in one of the Jedi games. Okay. Uh, you have, have you played Jedi, the, the second Jedi game yet? I have not. I bought okay. it. Okay. Spoiler. I it there is a, there's a section that involves a, a some some bit of that. All right. Luke or I, Hulk? I mean, I, James, will you speak for the Luke or Hulk? I, I, I mean, I like ring spaceships, mm. you know, as a thing, and I think it's more defensible, like than the other one. Uh, you know, you've got your bridge in the little, presumably in the little pod in the middle, mm-hmm. um, where they cut a bit out so you could still see out the front of it. It does feel like a spaceship that was primarily built to optimize the number of window offices, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which I, I think militarily may not be the best choice. Uh, I don't know. There's, it does. It predates the, uh, the new Apple headquarters. Uh, but <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I mean, I think it, it looks to be like somebody was playing with 3d rendering software yeah. and it's like, well, I've got a donut shape and I've got mm-hmm. a sphere and I'll cut a bit out and stick some engines on the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, I think it's, I think it's, better than the the 
invisible hand. Yeah, the invisible yeah, hand feels that. real, Agreed. real, real phoned in. It at least doesn't look like a thing you have seen before, right? And it, it looks alien, whereas the invisible hand feels like we had to put this together in a day. Um, I also am looking up because I'm fascinated about this. Uh, they mentioned in the Wikipedia article about the Luger Holt action. Oh, I guess they mentioned that at one point it was used uh, by the corporate sector authority. And I was mm -hmm. like, wait a second. And I realized I'm on the Legends tab. That's why. Mm -hmm. That's All right, fine. let's uh let's oh, yeah, I agree with James. Luke or Hulk slightly above the invisible hand, but I think it's just aggressively the invisible fine. hand is the bottom, right? Yeah, is aggressively problem. fine. Yeah, it's yeah. not it's not much. All right, let's uh let's go uh let's pivot away from the Trade Federation and the droid army. Uh mm -hmm. the the Jedi Starfighter, uh, which is a little pod which, thing with wings. There's a couple different versions, right? Um, are there? I guess this is labeled on this website the ETA two Jedi Starfighter. They come in different colors. Um, because uh, there's, there's, yeah, there are several versions. There's the, uh, this is the, not the one that has the, the, the cool docking ring thing. Yeah. The Delta seven, I think is the, that's the one Obi-Wan flies. There's a, uh, the Delta seven and then the Delta seven. Yeah. I think I have this one, the ETA, the Ada two. Yeah. yeah. You have a model of that. I don't think I, I don't, I don't have very many prequel models. Um, This is where an entire shelf of yeah. Is this is uh, this is Anakin. Got it. Anakin's. Yeah. Now, does Anakin go through more than one spaceship? Because he yes, later has one with does. docking wings. And that one, I think, kind of neat. It's got the R two unit. Is yeah, the almost like, on the side, like kind of on the side. Maybe not great in terms of a like uh, visibility kind of thing. It would be like if you had you wouldn't want an R two unit in your field of vision on your car that you were driving. That's but like I feel like proto Tie Fighter. Wing yeah, I feel like it's a little bit Tie Fighter, a little bit A wing. The the, the wings um, kind of open up on the side in the picture I'm looking at, so yeah, it does one, have the full Tie Fighter. I think they technically you can you can like. I think they flex a little bit. I don't remember. Attack yeah, position. I'm yeah, going to no. bold, bold uh, stance here that I'm going to carve out. I think this might be one of the best, for me, best prequel ships. And you you can see my bias here is that it's also the ones that's basically the closest to the original trilogy. It does have those cool flaps on the outside yeah. that go up, right? With that, yeah, out, yeah. I think that, that enhances a little mm -hmm. bit. And that gives a, uh, yeah, I like the nice lineage. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I like the, you know, uh, wh whoever it was who was designing that was told to tone it down a bit. Yeah, for the next okay. model. What if they fold? You know. So the two, oh, it okay. looks like. I guess I I did not know the names of them. There's the ETA two, which is the kind of pod like one, and then you've got the Delta Seven, which is a little. I mean, I don't. It's it's that Delta Seven just kind of look like an arrowhead. It's just kind of a wedge. Uh, I feel okay. like a little little little, little, little less block. exciting. But it's still, I like I like you know multicolors. It's got you know yep. it usually has yep. a couple of those. I like how having space for an R two unit. Uh, I mean, it looks like a fighter ship. Um, you know, I mean, it looks like a sort of uh, um, mini star destroyer. Yeah, kind of like you're just going for that wedge. Yeah. Um, I love, I think I wedge. think the the other one wins over that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, agree. I, I agree. I think that's just a bit it's a more just a little, little, little more, more variable. Yeah. 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 Now, also on Team Good Guy, uh, we have, and I think this was like they wanted this to be the like the X Wing equivalent in Phantom Menace, a Phantom Menace, uh, is the Naboo Starfighter. And one. And one available in both yellow and chrome. Chrome. I think. <laughs> I, only um, later. <laughs> I don't love it. I don't love it either. Booster. It's got the hot rod thing, but I don't love the bubble and I don't love. The... I always feel like it kind of looks like it's facing backward too. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it it's I like the Mandalorian take on it. Where I agree. It's I think kind the Mandalorian of, version is a little nicer. No, because it's got like more of the exposed bits and it, deconstructed, it's constructed. It's a little less polished. The hot rod take it. There is at least like a look that they were going for, and I yeah. like I don't. It doesn't work for me. I don't care about hot rods, but at least it's like we are going for a specific thing, and it kind of makes sense to me that like George Lucas would like that thing, and and there is you know there's a bunch of that in. Uh, other parts of the the prequel trilogies with the, the you know like how do we get fifties Americana into our Star Wars and it's like I don't I didn't need <laughs> I don't that need but, it yeah can I yeah I don't need it out. I don't care for it but at least I I respect the attempt okay um, couple couple things that should be mm. known about this one um I enjoy that in the Wikipedia list they list under countermeasures the chromium finish on the frontal hull section 
parentheses, temporarily dazzles optical sensors. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure, uh, it does, but excellent. <laughs> and then a thing that's referenced here, which I believe is true for other... Um, the engines are Nubian <laughs> engines. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I believe that there is... I think the, they mean Nabooian. Oh. I think one of uh, Padme's ships is mm. is called the, uh, the Nubian. It, it is. Yeah. She has the J-type which is, Nubian, which is that... It, it's kind of like, basically, the minivan version of the Naboo fighter. It's all mm. chrome. It does look awesome because there's all those scenes it where it's like cool. parked reflection, like on the yeah. desert. And, you know, that was basically like we have the ability to make a CGI mirror ship. Let's part, do it. Part That's of me kind, wondered yeah. if that was done as a joke because <laughs> there is a there is a joke in oh, is it I can't remember now if it's chasing Amy or mall rats, but <laughs> they talk about Darth Vader and the fact that he is like this big, powerful, yeah. like black icon and then you take the helmet off and it's just a pasty white guy but <laughs> they use the word nubian to describe oh, yeah. him and i was like a part of me wonders if that was like a callback <laughs> but uh, i don't feel like george lucas is probably self-aware enough no. you never know <laughs> sometimes he sneaks it in you're like oh you're more subversive than i realized but you yeah. uh the other big ship i remember from the prequels is the uh the kind of proto star destroyer the, the venerator the, the venerator yeah um, I like the I look think, of the venerator. I like the look of the venerator. I think I always get tripped up just by the idea that like you y- you have these capital ships that like it feels like they shouldn't go in and Sorry, out. It's just the, it's just the venator, venator, venator. Oh, it's E-N-A-T-O. just the venator. Okay, yeah. I thought it was venerator. You're right, uh, the venator class. Uh, and it's it's got some cool stuff to it. I mean, it's basically it's it's a star destroyer. Uh, it's got your triangular shape with the the big uh uh you know con station at the back with the, the bridge up on top um it's got i think it, it, it the middle of it kind of opens up so that you have yes, there's a i know especially in, in seeing in clone wars and in the movies we see things where they're like landing in the middle of it and taking off from the middle of it and that's that's kind of cool I I, but i think it. that there's always the thing in my head where i just like the I, I it's just like so these aren't around in like 30 years you guys built like because we have there's a ships. lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a, a lot, lot of them. Yeah. It's like, that's a lot of metal. Where's the, and you know, I mean, like to be fair, there was a lot of clones as well. There were a lot uh, of clones they, as well. Uh, you think they I, maybe I think retrofitted as... some of them as star destroyers. Well, they don't, that's the thing. They don't, I like, I guess I wanted to see something that looked more like a star destroyer. Right. Uh, yeah. Or um, so, yeah. Cause I, I feel like I'm willing to believe that the, the fighters go in and out of style, but that's tricky. Even like the Y wings look like a piece of junk that's falling apart, <laughs> but don't exist yet. <laughs> I know? mean, I think there's a there's a long a long class of um, visiting the shipyard, taking mm. apart you yeah. know the previous generations' ships, um, and so I think it's a kind of job creation I guess. scheme where that it's is- like. The the training montage for the first Jedi Survivor game is you're working in like a horrible shipyard scrapping stuff. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. They mentioned specifically in the Wikipedia page uh, as early as 19 BBY, many older Venator class star destroyers from the first production line were being scrapped on planets like Bracca, mm-hmm. uh, and then they lasted into that scrapping last of 14 and actually, even BBY. In, in Ahsoka, didn't isn't there a plot point where they steal like the engines from a Venator? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah so. Um, yeah. 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 I think there's I think there's some of that like it's yeah, they're being also keep in mind a lot of them are in battles and probably get yeah. destroyed too. Did I miss any any other ones uh that stick out in your mind as classic prequel ships? Um uh, I would say uh the Republic gunship would probably be oh, actually yeah. a top one for me. That is uh, a top that one. That is a classic. Um yeah, very a, I, I kind of like helicopter based uh with the sliding doors on the side. That one's Mm. interesting because it's one of the few. I mean, they use it both in space and not in space, but I feel like we see it more in atmosphere and it seems to be designed for use like in atmosphere more than uh, basically any of our other spaceships. Right. Because it's always like dropping clones off, picking clones up. Uh, I forget. Doesn't even sometimes carry those tanks. I don't like the tanks particularly, but uh, I think it does pick those up. And yeah. 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 (laughs) Um, I mean, is it kind of like a that's what got turned into the Imperial shuttles? It has kind of a similar. Maybe um, they had shuttles back then, too. So there's, I remember the Jedi have a shuttle that just looks like. A yeah. Shuttle, so. 
I, I like all the ships that are, you know, descended or yeah. that, that are retroactively put into the lineage. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I like I like the gunship a lot. I think it, yeah. it, it is to me. If you when you mentioned before about like sort of iconic ships of the of the prequels, I think that's up there for one. Yeah. Like when I think about it, because it lasts. It shows up in a couple other places. Mm-hmm. I want to say Rebels mainly. Or at some point, yeah, it shows I, up in Rebels. I, um, yeah. As opposed to, and that's like I feel like that's a really classic one that the clones are using. The yeah. clones have their like fighter ship that they're using that is like basically forgettable in that it's like what if, don't even what if, remember yeah if what if we made an x-wing as boring as possible basically, oh yeah 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 you know i don't even remember what it's called it's not a z95 headhunter uh oh no the z95 is too good for that there's a couple yeah. of versions but they they yeah. just have their clone uh snub fighter thing that is, is it this one know. is it the republic starfighter no i have to find uh, Wait, there, we... there are because there a couple of versions there's a v-wing out there yeah. Um is it the Arc 170? Is that what I it think is? It, I think there's a bunch of those in, in the Clone Yeah, Wars those show. are the ones that are like the sort of proto X Wingy, yeah. but not quite with like but not fun. Too many. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's too much. Too much. Uh we we missed out, of course, Count Dooku's sail oh. vessel. Oh, yeah. I like it. it. I gotta I say like it. it's a look, right? Yeah. It's kind of fun. It's, it's eccentric. It's weird. Doesn't seem like it's meant to go into battle, but uh you know, you make an impression. Um, yeah. Do you like what? Do we, how do we feel about is this shown? I don't remember if this is shown in uh, live action or not, but Yoda's ship, which is a version, I think, of the Ada 2. Um, but it's like cute, like Yoda. <laughs> which I, I don't think remember is so this. weird. I don't remember it. Uh, oh, it, it looks a lot more like a TIE fighter. Huh? Well, yeah. it looks it, it, a little bit. Oh yeah, Star, StarWars.com just calls it Yoda's fighter. Yes, it doesn't um, have a name. It just a modified describes as a Star modified fighter. Jedi Star. Oh, and it's got like a, the R two unit t- is like half of it on top. It's very Tie Fighter esque. Um, yeah, it, it's a it little looks ball like with yeah. You had like three pieces and you joined them together and you <laughs> made that ship. Yeah. yeah, it's a little lazy. It's a little yeah. lazy. I think we can all agree. Yeah. Uh, uh, any other? Any other really iconic? I mean, ones struggling to uh to come up with some really and good it's ones. you know i don't know if it's just nostalgia uh but you know i just i i think the original trilogy ships were just you know i like the different tie configurations i like the a-wing the x-wing the b-wing the y-wing or i like even the uh you know the medical frigate the mon calamari you know ships uh star destroyer obviously it was classic well the transports uh, the empire straight back transports yeah. the big sort of yeah, Amy ones. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think cloud cars. You know, like yeah, there's, there's a cars. lot of good. There's a lot of good work done in that original trilogy. They did, and especially they did a great job at kind of showing like, I mean, that's part of why the I think the the rebel ships are so great is that they look like they came from like a hodgepodge of places, uh, and whereas the imperial ships have a, a, a kind of unified aesthetic to them. So, um, yeah. Well, we've done a lot of really important work here today <laughs> on our Sunday, March 31st Lego stream. I've built a Lego a wizard house. Uh, we talked about uh, moving furniture. We talked about Baldur's Gate. And we have most importantly uh, reviewed uh, what we can vaguely remember about spaceships from movies we saw 20 years ago. Um, I, and so- failed to put them in an exact order just no. to annoy her. No, we didn't, nor did we really offer actual, I suggested, rankings. We mainly just provided our kind of amorphous reviews, which will make somebody who wants to put those information into a table slightly vexed, and they will ultimately give up. Um, <laughs> well, uh, thank you for uh, for listening. I have now assembled all of the Lego sets in my house, which is not a state that has been true uh, for several years. Uh, so I don't know what was ne- what is next, but likely I will be back at some point with more Legos and more chatting with uh people like james and dan james and dan anything you want to plug right now james uh no just uh, That's go, the spirit i um, mean go go to peacock buy my stuff there and uh let me start to pay off my uh vision pro which yeah <laughs> i have still not broken even on. oh gosh dan how you doing uh i love it people buy more of my books yeah books uh, go so, buy my books dmorn.com yeah. But when's the next book? The next book comes out in September. Oh, that's not that far away. Not that far away. 
Yeah. Have you? That, I don't know. Can we pre-order it? Already? I always it is pre-orderable. Yes, the Armageddon Dan, I, Protocol comes out in you September. You don't actually tell me any secret information. I just assume that some of the information I have is secret, and therefore I'm supposed to forget it. If I told um, you secret information, I would tell you this is a secret. I think I just. <laughs> <laughs> well. Okay, I'm always afraid to say anything, and it's like, ah, yes, I'm afraid to tell you that Dan Moran's front front page of his website advertises that the next book is Armageddon. How dare Protocol. you say that? Um, so, yeah, I, I I will say I will plug somebody else's book. Um, the a friend of here? mine. There's only room for one book in this book. Yeah, if you're gonna <laughs> buy two books today, <laughs> a, a friend of buy mine. Buy two of Dan's books, but if you're gonna buy three books, but if you buy three books, buy three of my books. But, <laughs> um. Fathom Folk by Eliza Chan is the number one selling book in the UK. They don't, you need, don't help, need my help. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's I not a number. Help. Yeah. You know, it's a, not a, a numbered selling book in the UK. Dan Warren's books, which may or may it not starts be with a one, the but it has a lot of le- numbers uh, after it. <laughs> well, at least that's something. So. I, 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 I just saw that today and I, I, I was excited that somebody I know has bothered to uh, write a best selling book. So. Yeah. Well, thank you to the folks that hung out with us. Uh, I hope you're having a relaxing afternoon. Take it easy.